What's going on guys, it's your boy Brad and I'm back with another video. As always, before I get into this video, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. I'm putting out great content materials for you guys every week to try and help you obtain your dreams of becoming a registered nurse. Enjoy the video. So the ABCs of NCLEX questions, the ABCs of nursing school style questions, things that we really need to know. You've probably heard it over and over, right? Airway, breathing, and circulation. It's very important to be able to distinguish the difference between the three because you'll see them a lot of times in a lot of questions. And the primary reason for knowing the difference is it really helps you prioritize which nursing intervention should be implemented first based on the patient's current problems. So when we're talking about airway, what are we talking about? We're talking about an actual physical occlusion of the airway, of the trachea, of the bronchi, of the bronchioles, right? The peanut in the throat, for instance, the patient with very thick, uh, mucus secretions, right? Things that are physically occluding the airway, preventing air from getting in and out. When we talk about breathing, a lot of times it's difficult to distinguish the difference between airway and breathing, but airway, we're talking about physical occlusions. With breathing, we're more so talking about ventilation. How well are you getting oxygen into your body, into your lungs, and therefore into your systemic bloodstream? And how well are you getting the oxygen out? And furthermore, it doesn't just have to be oxygen either with breathing. CO2 can be a big component with this. You can see that in a lot of questions. If you're talking about respiratory acidosis or respiratory uh, alkalosis, that is another big piece in regards to the CO2. And that is a breathing problem. That's a ventilation issue. So, you know, that's another component to the breathing portion. And then whenever we talk about circulation, that one right there is pretty clear cut and straightforward, right? You're having a circulatory issue in the systemic vasculature, right? Whether it could be a physical occlusion or it could be, um, you know, a, a hemoglobin issue, you know, uh, maybe anemia of some sort, your oxygen carrying capacity of the heme molecules of your hemoglobin is decreased. So you're not able to, uh, properly oxygenate the tissues like you would normally be able to that circulatory problem anything in the circulatory system that is a problem would fall underneath the circulatory piece so a couple of examples we're talking about airway right like i said we're talking about the peanut in the throat okay the person's got something they're just like the little kid who swallows you know a piece of food that's too large and now they're choking on it and dad's over there doing the heimlich that's an airway problem right the trachea or whatever it is however far down the food goes is physically occluded airway issue you know you're talking about breathing we're talking about the ventilation issue so we're talking about maybe the patient who has copd or asthma right they're having constriction of the bronchi or the bronchioles whichever way that it goes whichever disease process you're talking about right it's not necessarily an airway it's a ventilation problem okay and like i said it's difficult to distinguish the difference between the two but you're, you're poorly ventilating right you're poorly oxygenating the blood and you are also poorly getting rid of co2 so that's when you really have a breathing issue you know you're talking about respiratory diseases copd asthma bronchitis things of that nature and then circulatory issues okay could be talking about the dvt right deep vein thrombosis could be talking about a pulmonary embolism that right there will get a lot of people pulmonary embolism what is that a lot of people you know, I mean, you know that it's a blood clot. A lot of times it breaks off from a DVT, travels up and gets into the lungs. For some reason, we like to try and confuse that with a um, airway issue or with a breathing issue. But that is a clot that is in still in your systemic circulation. It hasn't broken off and, you know, magically transported into your bronchiole or something like that. It is still within an artery or a vein within your lungs. So it's a circulatory issue. Good little nugget for you guys right there. You have the patient who has poor capillary refill greater than three seconds. What is that? Circulatory issue. Patient who is uh, tachypneic. They have tachypnea, right? Respirations of 26, 27, 28 a minute, right? Just huffing and puffing like crazy. Breathing problem. So let me give you guys a little example question here. See what you would choose, see where your mind takes you, and let's work through this question together. You have a patient come in, you're on a med search floor. Patient comes up to your floor, they're post-op, they just had a thyroidectomy. You will probably see this question if you haven't already in some variation uh, during your nursing school career or on the NCLEX. Post-op from a thyroidectomy, whenever you go in for your initial assessment, the patient has bright red blood. Their dressing is saturated with bright red blood to the point where it's, so, it's super saturated. It's bleeding off the side. Um, your patient is pale, they're diaphoretic, uh, they have tachycardia, and their cap refill is six seconds on your hands and on the feet. 
what is your primary problem? What is the, the primary issue? Now, I know I just told you that if you have cap refill of greater than three seconds, you know, you could be talking about a circulatory issue, but let's take the entire, uh, let's look at the entire picture here. Okay. And I know you may also be thinking circulatory issue because of the, of all the bleeding that's going on there. You know, they're losing blood, a circulatory problem. That's not this patient's problem. This patient's problem is the airway. This is just something that you would need to know. But if you have a patient who has thyroidectomies, they run the risk of blood going back into their trachea, occluding the airway. So they are not able to get air in or out. So that is why this patient is pale. That's why this patient is diaphoretic, tachycardic. These are compensatory mechanisms that their bodies have kicked, that their body has initiated to try and compensate for n not receiving any oxygen and also not getting or expelling any carbon dioxide. So it's the blood occluding the air, the trachea and preventing air from getting in or out. But as you do more of these questions and as you practice this process of the ABCs, we'll really get a lot better at answering these questions. And furthermore, as you do more research and more studying about various respiratory diseases, various circulatory problems, systemic circulatory problems, you'll really gain a better grasp on the information and that'll also help you answer these questions more efficiently. But anyways, guys, I really hope this video helped you out. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't. Again, I'm putting out these videos every week for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Share it with a friend, share it with a, a fellow nursing student. I'm sure they could benefit from it as well. Good luck to you in, in your studies. Good luck to you on your exams. Good luck to you on your finals if you haven't taken them already. And I'll catch you in the next video. Nurse Bass soon to be. Peace.